We're right in the middle of the North of Falcon process where WFW is working on the salmon seasons for 2023 on the Washington coast and Puget Sound. And we've got some initially proposed uh, potential seasons, not yet approved, could still change a lot. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about the forecast for salmon, Chinook, Coho, Sockeye, Pinks, and Chum on the Washington coast and in Puget Sound, especially Puget Sound. All right, so we got to talk about the, the environment, the marine environment first, and we've had some, you know, big, big swings in 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 the environment that that you should know about. First of all, the the overall backdrop is the the ocean has has had more warming events uh, in, in the last decade uh, compared to the last 150 years. The ocean is warmer. You've heard about these these topics, I'm sure a lot, but it definitely has an impact on salmon. And particularly we saw in 2015, 2017, we had a big three-peat El Nino event where, where the, the waters of the North Pacific were warmer on average. At, but we, we made a, and you saw how this, uh, it really impacted salmon stocks. We had really low abundance in the Columbia River and in Puget Sound and other coastal streams for certain stocks. Some of them got impacted more than others. But over the last three years, We've had these this this rare three-peat La Nina event, which uh, really is good for salmon and steelhead. Good snowpack and and good marine environment conditions. You get a, a lot of turnover of the ocean, where where you get uh, you know the the nutrient cold rich colder water on the bottom uh, gets gets circulated with the top, and and it just it turns into a very productive marine environment that's conducive for salmon steelhead thriving and we see the numbers and the rebound and, and, and the stocks of salmon doing a lot better so so where are we at where are we going at, well, on one hand I, I will say you know conditions are not as good as last year last year was really incredible you could see from the stoplight chart uh 2022 was a great year across the board 2023 is still a very good year very strong good marine ocean conditions that you know really bolster the forecast for uh for for a year a repeat of last year and in some cases even a little bit better and we'll get into that in the forecast part of the video here but one of the major things that's upcoming this year is is that la nina event is uh, is not going to repeat again, right? So, so it's very highly likely uh, that we're moving away from La Nina. Uh, but will we move into full-on uh, El Nino conditions? Will it be neutral? Will we have uh, a return to to the warming events we had in 2015, 2017, which would be really bad news uh, for salmon and steel down the line? I think three to five years out, uh, that could be trouble because we're still in the backdrop of this largely warming ocean situation. Uh, that that's, that could be very problematic down the road. But what we have in front of us right now and this year is very positive and we're gonna go right into that forecast. All right, first of all, with Chinook, you know, it's important to understand that uh, the, the ocean Chinook season is largely driven, the abundance and the seasons are largely driven by the forecast for the Columbia River. And the forecast for the Columbia River is Good, not great for Chinook. Some some stocks doing really well. Some with some problem areas. Uh, not as good as la not expected to be as good as last year, uh, but still a good numbers of Chinook relative to the 10-year average. And so we're expecting, uh, you know, another good ocean season. Uh, you know, in marine areas one, two, three, and uh, the west side of four. Uh, you know, are, are are looking are looking good for Chinook seasons. When it comes to the Puget Sound. Things are a little different, you know. As soon as you get sort of, you know, east of Tatouche and 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 you're you're in that marine area, uh, for east area, and and then on through the Strait and Puget Sound, now you start to become more constrained by what's going on in Puget Sound. And Puget Sound has some, it has some problem areas, it has some trouble areas that that we'll discuss here. You know, number one, you probably heard the Still Guamish Chinook, while they had a really uh, good. Um, uh, increase in, in in spawners and returning fish in 2022 it's the numbers are still incredibly low uh, in terms of the escapement targets and historical abundance levels so we still have a lot of constraints around Chinook fishing in Puget Sound that you're gonna see play out in places like Marine Area 9 Marine Area 7 North Sound you know areas where they're, they're trying to limit uh, limit uh, the seasons that, that will and result in harvesting uh, more of the Stilguamish Chinook 
than uh, than is allowed. So you know, overall Chinook forecasts in Puget Sound are are up. They're they're positive, but the wild ESA listed Chinook on average are still lower. Which again, this is a problem for the long term outlook. As as the you know, we our quotas are largely based around how many of these uh, or the health of these wild ESA listed. Uh, Chinook stocks in Puget Sound. In terms of where you can expect uh, some some really good Chinook fishing, again, you've got to come back to Marine Area 10. It's a place that's going to have uh, a, a nice quota, decent seasons, and it and it's it's you, we want to be further north when it comes to uh, the the metabolic state of these of these Chinook. As as they go deeper into the South Sound, uh, they, they're not as bitey. They become harder to catch. They still can be caught, but you see the catch ratios. Uh, they, they change once you start to get into Marine Area 11 and 13 um, uh, on most years. In the Strait, uh, I think you can expect similar fishing to last year, right? You had you had uh, good fishing. The, those fish there, I mean, these are like ocean uh, Chinook in terms of how hungry they are and their willingness to bite uh, can be very, very good. My concern with the Strait is, will it be too good? Last year, right, we had all these challenges with seasons out in uh, Nia Bay and CQ. Uh, as uh, as the catch rate was, was was too good, there was too many fish out there, um, and a lot of the fish out there were were actually just blackmouth that were hanging around from the previous out migration. And so some of the things so some of the things being discussed in the process are like, should we have a min size of 24 inches in the strait versus 22, and what would that do for our seasons and our quotas out there? Um, so I, I think you know catching too many fish is, is potentially a bigger risk in in five and six and and and, and potentially getting the season shut down uh, too early. Okay, so let's talk about coho. So coho is I, I mean this is the backbone of your Washington coast salmon season and the coho is an incredibly positive story right now both in the Columbia River with expected uh, big, big increases over the 10 year average for early and late returning coho. Uh, a lot of times the coastal seasons though can be impacted by constraining stocks in other parts of the coast like the Queets a few years ago. And, and this year we don't have the constraining stocks so we're really good shape for, for coastal coho seasons out in the ocean. Moving to Puget Sound for coho, you know, we have a few uh, problem rivers in the North Sound and the Puyallup uh, and the South Sound with, uh, you know, with coho returning above the White River could create some challenges there. But really for our coho seasons, as long as we have enough uh, incidental uh, encounters, Chinook quota left, the coho season in Puget Sound should be, should be very good. And it should be good uh, in, in a lot of marine areas, but of course, uh, you know, the, probably the best place again is going to be Marine Area 10. It's where a lot of these fish, whether they're going north or south, come in initially around the oil docks and they decide whether they go north or they go south around there. But, uh, you know, we're, we're expected to have good coho abundance in the ocean, in the Columbia River and in Puget Sound this year. All right, we have to talk pink salmon in Puget Sound now. We're expected to have uh, really an awesome year of pink salmon fishing, a little bit better than it was uh, two years ago. As you know, uh, pink salmon only come in on odd years and 2023 is an odd year. So here we go, we're gonna talk pink salmon. You know, the pinks are only slightly above the 10 year average, but if you look at it, the 4 million pinks expected to return in Puget Sound rivers this year uh, is, is a really strong run relative to to, to re runs we had in recent past, right? I mean, the pinks were some of the biggest impacted runs with uh, the warm water blob. So we're not we're not expecting you know the ridiculous run size of 2009 or 2011 or even 2013, but we are expecting uh, to have uh, more pinks than uh, you can get through to get to Coal or Chinook in uh, places like Marine Area 10. Now we have already been told up front where there's gonna be no bonus pink limits in the salt. So uh, we can get that out right away uh, before even all the seasons are set. That was just put on the table for us. No bonus pink li limits in marine areas, but there might be bonus pink limits in a few different rivers, a few different watersheds. You know, we have some trouble with pink returns in some North Sound rivers. The out migration was poor in a few different spots, um, but in the Mid Sound, South Sound, uh, things look way more positive. You know, so like the Nooksack uh, is supposed to only have like 25,000 
Pink's return would be a really low number there. Uh, the Skagit though, half a million is, is more neutral, but that's still a lot of pinks. Uh, when you get down to the mid sound, the Green River uh, last uh, two years ago had like uh, 400,000 pinks. This year is expected to be double that. 800,000 pinks, that's an incredibly ridiculous number of pinks. The Puyallup is supposed to have a down year, but still, even on a lower year, uh, it's close to 400,000 400, pinks on the Puyallup. And then the Deep South Sound, uh, you're gonna love to hear this. If you're if you're like to fish uh, pinks in a small river with jigs and spinners, the Nisqually, 450,000 pinks, are you kidding me? I don't know if there's ever been a run size to that level and the Nisqually is expected there. So uh, that would be that would be absolutely incredible if we got those numbers. Uh, great, great opportunity to learn how to how to fish for pinks with spinners and jigs and all this stuff. Like, you know, not put away all the drift gear and all that flossing crap for pinks. You don't need to do that. They're so aggressive biters when they're in good numbers and uh, you've got clear water, which the Nisqually typically has when these pinks are, are, are entering the river. All right, so let's talk sockeye. Right out of the gate, no Lake Washington sockeye opener. Numbers are not expected to be good. Uh, sockeye has been one of those those runs that has been harder, I think, to estimate uh, because of some of the big swings. You know, if you if you were paying attention last year, the Columbia River had incredible sockeye run numbers, and and WFW is not going to forecast that uh, again for this year. They didn't forecast it last year. So, uh, you know, you could still have big upside surprises, but it's not in the forecast. We are expected to have, uh, you know, fishable numbers back to the Skagit, which means a Baker Lake sockeye fishery, uh, probably along uh, the normal timing that it's happened in the past. And, and there is expected to be sockeye uh, in the Wenatchee and the Okanagan. Actual numbers though, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see. You know, this is a, in the Columbia, this is like, you gotta watch dam counts. You really gotta be paying attention to the run size and what's going on as you're planning uh, your time in central Washington to take advantage of some of these, some of these incredible fisheries when they're there. Fish. All right, last week we gotta talk about chum. There were some incredible chum returns in 2022. And uh, if you're expecting 2023 to just build off of that, you're gonna be kind of disappointed because the recruitment year that leads to the 2023 uh, returning chum uh, was not a good year. And so we're, 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 we're still trying to work our way out of some of the low chum abundance in different areas. And the data that WFW has suggested 2023 is not gonna be a good chum return year. Chum uh, can be, I mean, chum can be incredibly fun fall, uh, you know, late fall way to, 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 you know, still chase salmon, They're incredibly aggressive uh, fish, but I think it's really going to be watershed dependent. If you're in the North Sound, you know, Nooksack, Skagit, some of these areas, uh, we, we, we got some problems in, in, in this area. You know, in the South Sound, we got problems too. Uh, hopefully there's another great uh, Green River chum run. Uh, that was an incredible time in 2022. If, if, if that repeats in 2023, there's gonna be a lot of happy people. Hood sport, not expected to be great either. And uh, you know, hopefully hopefully the, the commercials don't go over their quotas there. If the run's gonna be weak, um, you know, ho hopefully we, we just get chum continuing to rebound uh, as that's a, that's a great recreational uh, opportunity for a lot of folks. All right, last, if, uh, if, if you're watching this channel for the first time, you know, man, give us, give us a subscription. We got more content coming all year long on all of your favorite uh, fishing, hunting, foraging opportunities, shellfish harvesting. Uh, take a look at our library of what we've got on, on, on everything in Puget Town from salmon fishing to shrimping to crabbing to whatever. Our goal is to educate you as uh, you know, someone who's trying to pursue harvest recreation. You're trying to put food uh, on your table, food that you know where it came from, meat that you've harvested yourself and you know exactly uh, the whole process of how it was taken care of. And uh, we wanna, we're all about that lifestyle. We wanna encourage that, we wanna help you take on this learning curve. A lot of these, these, um, these different opportunities we have have so many challenges to them and it gets really technical. And so we try to put content out there here and pnwbestlife.com, the blog, uh, to really help you, to help anyone, regardless of your background and experience, um, be able to get into these things. So uh, drop us a comment, drop us a like, uh, subscribe to the channel and we're here to help you out.